Welcome to Huddle Up with Coach One. An incredible amount of highlights from 2019. That really sets the stage for what we have in 2020. And two, I don't know about y'all, but I started to get some chill bumps when I heard the Marching Owls thinking of game day 2020 right around the corner for us. Thank you so much for joining us on Huddle Up with Coach. We've got a jam-packed show for you today. You'll hear from our head coach, Brian Bohannon. You'll hear from our offensive and defensive coordinators, coaches Chestnut and Verpale. And then we will take your questions that you submit during the show. So I already saw a fair amount of fans involved in our chat on the right-hand side of your screen. That's fantastic. Keep it up. We'll take your questions through there. I'll ask a few questions as well. Love to have your answers and see where everyone's tuning in from tonight. So before I bring on our esteemed head coach, Brian Bohannon, I want to go on ahead and address two quick things that I know have been on the minds of some Al fans. Will there be social distancing in the stands and are masks required? So at KSU, we have been monitoring COVID-19 local and national guidelines. It is ever-changing as new data is released daily. We have seen positive signs and are preparing for a safe and exciting game day environment. As the season kickoff nears closer, our leadership will make decisions based on the safety of fans, student athletes, and all of our community. So he doesn't need an introduction, but I got to give credit where credit is due. You know Kennesaw State's head coach Brian Bohannon has led the Owls to be the best startup program in college football history. KSU also is quickly becoming one of the best FCS programs in the nation. It's one of nine teams to make the playoffs each of the last three seasons and one of five teams to win a playoff game in each of those three seasons. Recently, NFL Draft Diamonds named head coach Brian Bohannon as one of the top three coaches in all of FCS football. So without further ado, Coach Bohannon, get us started on Huddle Up with Coach. The floor is yours. Man, thanks, Nolan. I appreciate it. And it's uh... – I mean, what an exciting night. We get to watch football, highlight tape. We're talking ball. We're talking the season. You know, after the last several months, I think we're all excited about that. I know as a coach, I can promise you I am. Um, but, but we're fired up. I want to say thank you to everybody on this call for your support. You guys don't know how much it means to us for, for you to be a part of this program in different ways. Um, it, 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 we can't say enough to you for what you do for our program. We don't. We're not able to do the things that we can do without your support. So more than anything, thank you. We appreciate everything that you do for our program. Um, we're excited about the season. We're excited about 2020. Heck, we're just excited to see kids back in the weight room a week ago. You know, so it's uh, the small victories right now. But I I'll give you a little quick update on where we are, kind of what's been going on, just so I know everybody kind of wants to know where everything's at. Um, you know, uh, we, had, we were going into practice nine on uh, March 13th, got called off about 1.30. Um, we had an abrupt team meeting. We sent everybody home on the spot, um, kind of a crazy day. Um, and, and, and that was really the last we saw our kids. We met as a staff on Monday and really spent the day uh, figuring out the best way we can go virtual, not knowing how long we were going to be in this situation. And we spent the whole day and our staff and Coach Klein, our recruiting coordinator, put a lot of work into coming up with a plan that we could go attack recruiting because that was really the next thing for us. And so we put together a plan at 4 o'clock. We broke, and uh, really we haven't been back to the office uh, at all until Monday, this previous Monday. Um, you know, we were all trying to navigate and figure out how we were going to manage things. I, I, told, I told a lot of people, the first two weeks for me, I was miserable. I couldn't figure out what to do, how to do it, where to go, what to do. I was lost trying to figure it out. I finally got in a little bit of a groove of doing some things to, to help that. One, my dogs are in unbelievable shape because I, I walked them about three miles a day every day, and that was just simply so I could get out and do something. I probably cleaned the house more than I have in my entire life because it helped occupy my time. And uh, there were staff competitions on grilling. Uh, <laughs> it, there was group text on – uh, whether it was brisket or, or, or wings or pork chops, whatever it might be, we were, we were constantly going back and forth. Uh, just a unique time for everybody, you know, and I know everybody on this call has their stories of the time. It was a unique time and not knowing whether you're going to get back or not, not knowing there was going to be a season or not, not we're going to practice or not. But, I mean, it was just so many unknowns. And I think, you know, as a coach, I think you always want to control the environment and have a plan and be able to move forward. And we couldn't have, we couldn't do anything. And it, it was really a, I say unique, I'm being nice about it. It's kind of a scary time, to be honest with you. Um, so, 
as of late, we got some good news. We're getting back going. Um, just to update you, our staff reported back on June 15th. Um, we've kind of modified ours a little bit. We got a lot of health and safety precautions in place, um, you know, because that's the most important thing. We want to play ball, but our kids and our staff and everybody's health and safety is most important. So we got some things in place. Our kids also started voluntary workouts on Monday. Uh, we probably got about 16 or 17 kids that have worked out this week. Um, they all have to have a COVID test before they come back. So depending on where they're coming from, that's taking a little bit of time to get that, to get that in. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll have about 25 or 30, I think, before it's all said and done, that'll be in voluntary workouts. And then July 1, we're bringing the, the, the majority of the group back um, to get going. So we're, we're, we're we're on a really good path right now to do everything that we, we set out to do. Now, it's going to be a different path, but we'll get everybody back in, in July. The NCAA passed a new 14-day uh, period where we could be a little more engaged with football starting July 24th, and, uh, and we plan on playing our first game on September 5th. So everything on our end is on path to play football. And, and guys, I know for y'all, but I'll say for the coaches on the set right now, Man, we're freaking excited about that because I'm going to tell you, it, it, you know, there was a lot of things in question. There may be some ebb and flow of what happens along the way. And Nolan mentioned about how we're going to be in the stands and how we're going to do this and that. You know what? We're going to work our best to keep everybody health and safety and find a way to play football. And I think that's the ultimate goal. And, and, and whatever we need to do to do that, that's, that's what we're going to do. Um, so, so we're set to play. Our staff's back in place. We're, we're, we're getting kids back in place on a regular basis. We should have had everybody back. I would say, uh, hopefully, uh, majority of the team, we should start working out together July 6th. I say together, probably in groups of 15 or 20. Um, but, but they'll be on campus. Um, and then uh, we'll, we'll report for camp and do everything and get ready to play September 5th. I'll go ahead and bring it up now. We're, our September 5th game was originally scheduled for point. Um, the NAI, which is uh, point plays in NAI, uh, they put out some legislation, legislation that pushed back their start date. So they can't start until September 12th. So we lost that game. We're in the process of finding a game. I think I feel really good we're going to have a game on September 5th. That is our goal. Um, we have approached and called everybody that is available. I can assure you that it doesn't matter who it is, where it, I mean, where it is does matter a little bit because of travel and everything that goes with it. But anybody that's relatively close, we have communicated with. We feel like we're going to have a game. I really can't say who that is because I don't know that yet, but we feel confident we'll have a game on September 5th. Uh, obviously, it will not be point, but we'll have another home opponent uh, is our goal. Our goal is to go out and find an FCS if we can find it, but that may not be the case. We want to find a game. We need to play September 5th, and I think ultimately that's, that's what we'd like to do. So everything's on track, which is exciting. Um, just fired up to be talking ball tonight about what we're doing. Uh, fired up that you guys are on the call tonight. Um, I, I, shoot, it's exciting, man. I, you know, I feel like it's – every year has its new adventures, but this one beats all now. <laughs> There's nothing that, that, that will ever be like what we are navigating right now. And, uh, and we're going to do it. And we're going to – like I said, we're going to do everything. Uh, it's, it's in the best interest of our kids. Um, but we want to play football. You know, we're excited about it. And, uh, and we want to play. And every, every Zoom call or every call I was on, these coaches did a great job. You know, I would talk about different stuff going on, and, and the question always was, Coach, when are we coming back? Every meeting I was on, I'd go through a lot of stuff that was going on. We'd talk about a lot of stuff. Like, hey, anybody got any questions? Coach, when are we coming back? And I got on a team meeting, uh, I guess it was yesterday afternoon, and said, guys, we're coming back July 1. So we're, we're excited. Um, I don't mean to take up the call, but I can tell you, man, I'm, I hope you can sense where I'm at. Um, we're pretty fired up to have an opportunity to, to get our kids back working out and uh, and getting ready to go and practice and doing all things we can get ready for the season. Thank you, Coach. And we're going to go on ahead and take some questions that fans have submitted to our Owls Fund email address over the past couple of days. But before I get to that, I want to start out. You're not rocking it tonight, but you told us you had quite the beard going on during your quarantine. Is that true? Yeah, I did. And, you know, I'm going to pull up a picture and see if I can show it because I was really pretty proud of it. I was a little bit ashamed that I – that I uh, – that I did cut it off, but I said when I got going on it, <laughs> that whenever I went back to work, I was going to shave it. And so I, about a week or so ago, I cut it off. But I was, it was pretty stout, man. I, I was pretty proud of myself. That's the, I usually grow a goatee occasionally, but I, I that one was, uh, 
I'm in two and a half months. What else are you going to do? You're in a pandemic. You're shelter in place. Let's grow a beard. Mountain man coach Bo. That's what he does in the off season now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's go ahead and take one of our fan questions. It comes from Matt M. And you spoke about this, but maybe some more time to elaborate with it. He says, we, the fans, are already feeling the butterflies of a new season that's almost here. How excited were you and the players to hear students will be back on campus in fall 2020, which should allow for KSU to have a football season? Yeah, unbelievably excited. I mean, you know, that, that's a big part of what we do. I mean, um, our fan base, part of it's, you guys on this call, a big part of it's our students. We're all in this thing together. And to have our to know we're having uh, you know, on campus classes and students are gonna be back, our kids are gonna be back. Um, I mean, this is what we do. I think, you know, the thing I missed the most was the personal interaction with kids and staff throughout the whole time. And there's a lot of things, but that is what I miss the most. That's what I enjoy the most. And to have everybody everybody back and be able to do the things that we enjoy doing. Even though I may have to communicate from six feet, my gosh, I'm going to communicate from six feet. Whatever we need to do, we're going to do it. But I think that's the part I know. Uh, I think all our coaches, I know for me, man, I miss it, man. It, 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 it was tough. But we're excited to be back, excited that students are back and ready to get going. Garrett asks, what do you feel are the biggest challenges facing our student athletes this upcoming season? And how do we come alongside you, the coaches, and the students to assist in overcoming these challenges? Well, I think, you know, unique to any year. I mean, we're, we're a little bit behind, but everybody is on getting ready to go play. Um, and I think just getting our kids together, keeping them all safe and healthy, I think is really a, it's, it's really a big deal. And I'm not, I'm not talking about straining a hamstring necessarily or whatever, just keeping everybody healthy so we can continue to operate um, and do the things we need to. So I think, I think that's a big piece of it. And we're really working hard at it and have really got a, a lot of great people and smart people that are we're putting together plans and we're following guidelines to to do what we need to do. Um, I, I think from a from a fan, I mean, hey, coming to the game and cheering your eyes on that is a number one for us. Your support and being present is huge. You, I don't know that I can tell you how big of a deal it is for our kids, and I'll say coaches too for me too, but our kids. That is the first thing they talk about and look at when they're in, in a game. They won't say it when they come to the sideline, after, but that is it. So I would say pack the stadium as best we can, whatever that looks like, whether there's a seat in between you or there's not. I don't know that right now. But let's, let's, the support needs to be, hey, let's be there. Let's be loud. Let's be proud. Let's cheer the owls on because these kids, that's what they enjoy the most, and that's what's really important. You and other members of your staff have been in touch with community members over the course of this pandemic. Did you come across members of our KSU family that like that question, kind of have an interest in supporting our student athletes well-being? Absolutely. And our staff, we did reach out to a lot of folks over the over the time we were we were kind of on lockdown. And you know, the great thing about the, you know, all the supporters and the people on the call is like they're in it for the same reason we are. They they're hey, how are the kids doing? How are you doing? You know what I mean? The same question we're asking them because the call was really about, hey, guys, how are you doing? You know what I mean? Because I think during that time, that was the big question. How's everybody doing? And uh, I think sometimes you just need to have a chance to communicate, you know, and, it, and nobody has all the answers, can fix everything. Um, but I think, uh, you know, our fan base is, is awesome. Um, I think they got the best interest of our kids um, and, their, and, and their welfare. And, uh, guys, I'll be honest with you, we feel the same way. We want the best for everybody. And, uh, and we, want, we want everybody to be safe and healthy. But I'm going to tell you what else we want. We want this program to be the first thing people talk about when they talk about FCS football. And I'm talking about not only just winning games, I'm talking about the stadium, the atmosphere, the support, everything that goes into Kennesaw State football. We want it to be elite. We want it to be elite. And I've always said, you know, people talk about this and that. First thing ought to, ought to come out of somebody's mouth when you talk about FCS football and that conversation, I'll be Kennesaw State. And everything that goes with it, not just on the field, but everything. And I think that's our goal. That's what we're shooting for. And you guys are a huge part of that. Great points, Coach. We have another fan question. Matt is asking, your schedule this year takes you to five states outside of Georgia. Do you have any concerns that any of those games could be canceled? Well, I think going into a year like this, you got to be ready for everything. I mean, I, you know, I, 
we don't know how this is going to go. I was on the call with some other coaches in the conference today, and, you know, we're talking about different stuff. The uh, AFCA, head of AFCA had a call the day before. Hey, you know, this may happen in this area. Somebody might not be able to play because maybe, a, you know, a group gets tested positive and they have to shut down. Those are all things out of our control. What, and so what really what we have to do is go take our, our group and, and do everything we can to keep them safe and healthy and also get ready to play football. And that's a, that's a little bit of a juggling act when you think about a team sport. So that's what we can do. And then we just got to take it one week at a time and see what happens. Could games get canceled? Absolutely. I think there's, I think it, it, when you sit and look at it, could it happen? Absolutely. And uh, we're just going to have to navigate it week by week because it very well could happen. Um, there, there's a lot of talk about, well, what's going to happen with the playoffs if, if one, you know, if a certain team plays eight games, another play, team plays 11 games. I don't know if they're going to be able to give a definitive answer on that. You know, I, I really don't. I think, I think this is uncharted waters. We're just going to have to take it week to week and see what happens. And, you know, like I always – I've told our team for five years, we can control everything. Just go win every game. You know, you go win them all, then it'll work out the way you need it to. And, and we've said that from day one. Like, don't get into letting a committee or somebody else decide your fate, which we were in last year. You control your fate by, by going and preparing and taking care of business, and then you don't have to worry about it. Another fan question, Coach Lindsay is asking, what have the upperclassmen done to lead the team during everyone's time at home? You know, this has been a really unique time. I think, um, I think as a team, we've probably gotten closer. And this is kind of weird. We've gotten closer during this time away than we probably had if we'd have been here. You know, our staff has done a great job with, with these Zoom calls. And, and you can call them position meetings, but a lot of times they're life meetings. You know, and then you're having unit meetings, whether it's an offense or defense unit meeting. And it may be football, but most of the time, it's, it's some life stuff. It's getting to know your teammates. It's getting to know your staff. So I think a couple of things happen. I'm being interested to see how it – you really know till you get, you get into it and get in. But I think our team probably came closer in a lot of ways, learned more about one another than they would have in a normal environment where they would have been gone for a period of time before summer school or whatever it might be. And I think the other thing for all of us, and, and I, I would imagine everybody on this call could, would say this, man, it makes you appreciate what you have. It, you know, you, you take things for granted in life, and then sometimes they get taken away, and you're like, holy cow, I'm sure I'm glad I have that. I sure appreciate the opportunity to do this. I know as a coach I feel that way, and I know our players – I think will be much more hungry to go do what they love to do because it got taken away from them. And I think appreciation for the game, the preparation, which is not always fun for kids, but I think they appreciate that more because they don't, they lost it, you know? And I think that's, you know, sometimes in life we take things for granted. We probably shouldn't have. And, but I think it creates some appreciation that, that we didn't have. So those are two things I think, there's a lot of other things that happen, but those are two things I think we're, I hope as, as we go through this that are, I think we're going to be really impactful for us. Very interesting to hear. All right, coach, last question from our fans before we turn it over to our coordinators. It comes from Matt M and he's asking, what is your strategy when it comes to keeping the players safe from injury as they get into top condition for the season? And does it involve rotating players in and out more early in the season? Well, I mean, preparation is everything. I mean, everybody, you guys get to see Saturday. But really, games are won and lost in preparation. And I tell our guys, what you do from January to August is really what's going to give you the best chance to be successful. You know, and so Coach Carizzi and our strengths do a phenomenal job, all right? And we, we really are diligent about doing everything we can to get our kids ready to go. And we understand that we want to be the best conditioned football team in America. I didn't say in Georgia. I didn't say in South Carolina. I didn't say in New Jersey. I said in America. So, and that's but because that's the style of play we have. We, we, we play fast. We play hard. And so, those are things that we have to work through. And like right now, Coach Carizzi, you know, we've had a couple mornings of running since they've been back. And the small group we have, we're, he's trying to gauge where we are. Because this is new for us. We don't – we're going to have to figure out where we are. And then we start to – 
attack that to work on getting prepared. So I think preparation is key for, uh, for injury prevention. Um, as far as rotating players, it's really per position who we think can go in there and help us win ball games. Some positions might play four or five guys in a game. Some positions, kid may play the whole game. Um, a lot of that depends on do we have a, a – what group of guys that we think can help us go win. And honestly, when guys come talk to me about playing, I said, well, I got to trust you. I said, if I don't trust you, I'm going to put you in the game. And that, they may not be the best at everything, but I trust them. Don't mean they're going to do anything perfect. I said, you earn trust on the practice field. You earn trust on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and all. That's how you earn trust. So I think it just depends on each position, how much we rotate. Uh, some kids might not – we know might not be able to play a full game, so we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna take that kid and we're going to go, all right, how do we maximize his talents? Our job is to maximize the kid's talents. Whatever, whatever he's got, we're going to try to maximize it. You know, and, and some kids, a lot of kids, they're, they're all different. So we're, we just try to figure out what it is. But sometimes we substitute, sometimes we don't. just depends on the position, the time, uh, you know, just kind of all the circumstances that go with it. Coach, first quarter's in the books. You got us out to a great start. I think we're in the lead. Great job answering fan questions today. Awesome. Thanks. So before I bring on Coach Chestnut, I want to pose the question, what's your favorite memory from the 2019 season? Was it a home game? Was it a road game? Was it a game you watched on TV? This game you were there in person? Let us know. Uh, just chime in with our chat box on the right and find out your favorite memory from the 2019 season and see who's got the same one. So let's bring on our offensive coordinator, Coach Chestnut. He, this offense this year, it's going to keep rolling. Eight starters come back from 2019. That was a team that led the nation in rushing at 342 yards per game while ranking number one in the nation in passing yards per completion. And unlike my earphones right now, the Owls did a pretty good job of uh, not losing the football. I know ball security is a big thing. We'll talk about that later. But Coach Chestnut, we'll start out. How was your quarantine? Anything interesting happened with you? Well, unfortunately, nothing interesting happened. It, it was an old Bill Murray movie, Groundhog Day. It was the same day repeatedly, right, over and over. And, you know, um, my about six weeks in when things somewhat began to open back up, you know, I, I took my daughters out for a bike ride in the neighborhood. And, and my middle daughter really kind of drove the, the moment home for us. She said, you know, Dad, this is the first time in six weeks I've left the driveway. You know, but that, that was probably the most exciting moment quite honestly, of our, of our quarantine, you know, going for a bike ride, you know, after being uh, sheltering in place for six weeks. But, um, but, you know, absolutely excited to see things progressing. Uh, was really fired up about our team meeting yesterday where Coach Bohannon, you know, communicated we'd be back at it, on, you know, with everyone on July 1st. And of course, excited for the guys to be back in a voluntary capacity and, and be back in the office this week as well. Well, we can't talk about the offense without bringing up something about our quarterbacks. And I think we got a great quarterback room going into 2020. There's obviously experience, there's talent. And as I've come to find out, there's some leadership too. So what has the leadership looked like within the QB room during the time of this pandemic? You know, it's been great, quite honestly. And Coach Bo actually brought up some of the things that we were doing, you know, through the pandemic with uh, unit meetings as well as individual meetings, you know, and and we were touching those guys really on a daily basis and, and checking on well-being, uh, talking enough ball that, you know, to keep everybody kind of mental health right. But really it was more about, you know, making sure everybody was doing okay, you know. And, uh, you know, as it progressed, I was, I was really thrilled with what I saw Tommy and Jonathan, as well as even Xavier being a young guy, you know, what I saw them doing, taking the reins and, and going out on their own and circling guys up, making, checking on guys, you know, themselves. And, and talking ball, and then as things have progressed, you know, over the last few weeks, uh, you know, where we can get out more, you know, there's been individual workouts, you know, Tommy's got some guys. I know Shaq and Tommy actually were out on the, on the field throwing the ball, working on routes and timing and just, you know, out there, out there throwing the thing around, you know, uh, this morning. So uh, I've really been pleased with those guys. Of course, as you said, you know, they're dynamic players, all three of those young men who we have on campus right now. Are, are very dynamic players, but they're also outstanding human beings and great leaders. So we're really fortunate uh, in that room. There's no question about that. So how specifically do you think that can help them out come time when we actually get in training camp and maybe those first couple games? Well, I think just what Coach was saying, actually, you know, honestly, I, I agree wholeheartedly to echo what Coach uh, mentioned earlier. 
I feel like our unit is as close as maybe we've been in a long, long time. Of course, those OGs were together for so long. Chemistry and the bond that naturally occurred from the hell we put them through to build the program, quite honestly. Um, you know, that occurred there, but I, you know, I'm, I'm extremely excited about what I'm seeing, the, the chemistry, you know, that I'm seeing with our guys right now, even though it's just Zoom meetings. And I really truly feel that as we head into camp, um, you know, and we are around each other, Tommy and X and, and obviously Jonathan uh, are going to be able to solidify some of those things and, and keep his head in a, in a really positive direction. So I'm, I'm extremely excited. Great to hear. So last year, one of the big question marks on offense was what was the offensive line going to look like? There are plenty of yeah. new faces. Yeah. This year, it's a different story to return all conference yeah. players all up front. So what's one of the biggest challenges for the O-line in 2020? Well, I tell you what, I should have told you guys to take stock in Tums last year because there was, there was quite a bit of that <laughs> for me last year. But no, it, you know, and I'll be real honest with you guys about the offensive line from last spring through the, the end of the season, in 21 years, going on 21 years of coaching, those guys probably made as much improvement as any offensive line that I've been around. So I'm really proud of them for that and the choices they made to work themselves into a unit of cohesion and, and just play well. But I would also tell you that if you ask each of those young men right now what they feel about this season, they would tell you, Coach, we haven't approached our ceiling. We're not even close to what we can be. And I think that, again, is the most exciting part of those guys right now. As Coach also mentioned, uh, earlier, you know, you don't know what you've got until it's gone. So not being able to finish spring ball, not being around one another and, and all those things, these guys are hungry right now. I mean, they're, they're super hungry. And, you know, and, and every time we have a meeting and we talk, you know, the, the focus, you know, we've had some of our best uh, offensive line individual meetings through this pandemic. They're locked in. In fact, we've started farming out install. Like, you know, hey, Jake Lasher, you've got this play this week. You know, Zion Katina, you got this play. Will not five, but you got – and they're coming in and hitting the ball out of the park. You know, they're locked in. So, you know, that's super exciting. You know, uh, you know, obviously the schematic gains that they're making, just the knowledge of what they're supposed to be doing. But most importantly, they recognize that, that their ceiling is much higher and, and they're very hungry right now. So that, that's an exciting thing. Well, let's stay a bit behind the ball. We've got the quarterbacks, the offensive line. Let's go with the two-back group. What depth developed during the spring ball that we had, and who are some names we should yeah. keep an eye on? Got that group of young guys that we brought in, you know, with, with Preston and Cade and, and, and even Cole Gilly. But, you know, and I was really pleased with Preston's progress and Cade, you know, as we went through. Of course, you got the old the hand, you know, the, the Kyle Glover, you know, Mr. Steady, which really Kyle embodies the, the type of two-back that we've had a ton of success here with, you know, of course, with Jake McKenzie early on and, and uh, his leadership, you know, that's another young man that I'm really proud of, of the leadership that has emerged through the pandemic, you know, and, and just his interactions with the guys. And then you got big B Sims, you know, Brandon, and, you know, you know, we just got to keep Brandon healthy, but his big body and his ability is, is, as we love to say around our place to hit it up in there is it, really advantageous, you know, for us. And, and I think all of those guys that I've mentioned really have a, a skill set that we can use, you know, of course, losing Bronson, super proud of him, you know, with the opportunity he's got to go be with the Ravens. Um, but I am really excited about that group and really the depth top to bottom. We have a large number of guys who are very capable of helping us. That'll allow us to keep some guys fresh, uh, you know, keep hitting it up in there with those guys as well. And, and also maybe be a little bit more creative with the position and do some things that, that maybe we haven't done in the past, but, but still keep the main thing the main thing. I think that's been a true – really a strength of ours through the years is we have an identity. We know who we are and we know what works. Well, Coach, I'm not going to ask you to give away any trade secrets, but with this more time on your hands at home, have you thought up any new trick plays or any wrinkles to the playbook? Believe me, there's been a ton of pen to paper <laughs> in, this, uh, <laughs> in this pandemic, you know, and, and a couple things, you know, that I know we talked about during spring ball. When you've got the talented quarterback room we've got, right, there's some things that we could do that, that absolutely we would, we would love to be able to maximize, you know, all the talent that we have. That's one thing that we prioritize. You know, one of the best things, one of the most, um, you know, the most enjoyable things about being here at Kennesaw State was the opportunity to build an offensive system from scratch. And we knew what we wanted to do, obviously, our backgrounds, um, but we've been able to do some things to fit around 
the individual talents that we have from our player, right? We've been able to build it around our personnel to a certain extent while at the same time have an identity. So we'll look forward to continuing to do that this season. I, I hope to, to uh, take advantage of some of the, some of the pen to paper, as I mentioned earlier, you know, through this pandemic and, and do some things that are going to help us win a lot of football games and be very productive on offense, obviously. All right. Well, I think that's got me and a lot of fans excited right now to see the Owls in action here in 2020. Coach, thanks for your time. Yeah, absolutely. Glad to be here. That's our offensive coordinator, Coach Chestnut. We're about to switch sides over the defensive side. I want to pose another question into the chat room. Seen some really cool answers looking back at 20, 2019, some favorite moments. Of course, the Bryson Armstrong punch out at Wofford, uh, one of the best hustle plays that you will see in all of college football from the past years and probably quite some time as well. I want to flip it now to what game are you looking forward to the most for the 2020 season? Participate in our chat room on the right-hand side. We started to take some questions after we speak with Coach Verpale. We'll take some of those questions and get back in touch with Coach Bohannon and get his answers. So now on the defensive side, the Owls returned seven of 11 starters on defense that ranked number three in the nation last year in total D and held opponents to 278.7 yards per game and 18.7 points per contest. It's a similar defense, a similar namesake for those coming back in a similar name, but a new title with our new defensive coordinator, Coach Verpale. Coach, thanks for joining us. You get the question, how is your quarantine? Anything happened or was it Groundhog Day for you? Well, Nolan, it wasn't a, <clears throat> it wasn't a lot of fun, but um, got a couple new hobbies I tried out uh, that I've never done before. I tried to play tennis and uh, I wasn't very good at it, but, but I did try. Um, so I got a tennis racket off Amazon, and then uh, two of our coaches, Coach Zachary and Coach Cook, have been uh, on this Peloton app, and it's a workout app that, that I downloaded, and um, they're sending me videos every day, so uh, I'm, I'm kind of in front of the TV jumping around doing these workouts, so that was a thing that became kind of interesting when you're locked in a house, and then you know, I did a good amount of fishing, but uh, it wasn't much to do, you know, just waiting to get back in here, waiting for Coach Bo to say, hey, guys. We're back in the office. Never have I wanted to be back at work so much in my life. So, No good fishing stories for us? I mean, it didn't grow from this big to this big and, you know, out of the screen? I think I had about 10 redfish. They were so big I had to throw them back, you know, fortunately. But, hey, you know, I, I don't have my phone on me, so I'd show you the pictures, guys. I apologize. All right, let's go for the truthful answers now, okay? Absolutely. So uh, how much does it help kind of given everything going on to have a veteran group coming back in 2020? Um, you know, I think having a veteran group is, is awesome because you got the guys that have the maturity and the experience and that have played in games. And, um, you know, when you're coaching them, those guys, you know, they've been in the program. They know the expectations. They know what the gold standard is. They know what we need to accomplish. Okay. And that makes my job a lot easier because they've been there. They've done that. And we're all in a weird situation. No one kind of knows how to handle it. And those guys that have experience are able to step up and, and, and kind of lead. And it's not like you're teaching a freshman for the first time something. And they know what they need to get done. Like I said, Coach, Coach was talking about, we're going to be the best in shape team in the country. So they know. They're telling each other in our meetings, guys, you better be running. You know, when we come back, it's go time. So it's nice to have those groups. And then we've been doing these installs and these Zoom meetings. And um, it's it's – it's real nice to have a, a group that's played a lot because you're at like algebra three right now. You're not in, you're not in seventh grade math. So you're going, you're getting more detailed. You're going in the why you're telling a lot of, uh, a lot of things that guys, uh, if you had a younger group, you'd be back here on phase one. We're on phase six and, and I really get to enjoy it. So it's, it's made my job, you know, a lot easier, but they're looking to get back, but it, it really helps with what we're doing in this situation with this pandemic too. So go back to spring brawl. What uh, progress did you see from the defense? Um, you know, I saw we were going in the right direction. I took, took the steps. We're going there. You know, as Coach Bo was talking about, we had eight practices. You know, we were lucky to get those eight practices because there's a lot of other schools that didn't get those eight practices in. So, you know, we were, we were I tell people, we were blessed to get those in. Um, within those eight practices, we, uh, we got our six base installs. So we were uh, – very fortunate we were able to accomplish a lot of things. Because every year you tweak something or you change a name or you put something new in and to get practice and get reps. And, you know, we've been watching that film. They've probably watched that spring practice film 100 times. They're probably tired of watching it. So um, 
I was happy with what we were able to get done in the direction we were going. We know the household names coming back in 2020, but uh, from spring ball and maybe some parts here in the off season going through installs and team meetings, any pleasant surprises, any new names? Well, spring's always fun because you get to watch those redshirt freshmen who've been on the other scout team come and go. And a lot of them will say, whoa, look at that guy. We didn't know he could do that. So it's always great to watch those young guys compete. And, you know, with our linebacker core, our core you know, with Freem Taylor and Chance Bates, I thought they had a good spring. And Markeith Montgomery, um, we have some young D linemen that did real well. And Joel Parker and Marquez Baxter. And, uh, you know, when Bryce Armstrong was out there, he's usually pretty good. So, you know, I, don't, I wouldn't call that coaching, but he's pretty good. Um, and a lot of guys had flashes out there. So um, I was pleased with what they were doing. And really, um, just collectively, as the unit buy-in was what I was most impressed with. And they started to bond and come together. So I really enjoyed that. I thought we got a lot accomplished this spring. Coach, you've been in a handful of places before Kennesaw State. You've been in charge of some very successful defenses. What have been trademarks of previous defenses that you've coached? Well, we're going to be aggressive and we're going to be multiple. Um, I always had a thing, a little motto, always attack. You know, um, you know in my, my opinion, my mind, we're, we're going to be sound. You know, but we want to be on the attacking side. We don't want to be sitting back and catching it. And, um, you know, we're going to do multiple packages that are going to kind of formulate around the players and the personnel that we have because you have to go around the players that you got, you know. But the biggest, most important thing, and it comes from Coach Bone, from everyone, is we got to have buy-in and we got to play hard. No matter what defense you call, you know, it ain't about the blitz, it's about the blitzer, right? If we got 11 guys running to the ball, you're going to be pretty good. Now, if they're going the right direction, you're going to be even better, right? So that's the main thing is guys buying in, playing hard, and playing for each other. Um, so you know, th those are some things that, that, that hopefully we keep this thing building and going to. So right before KSU, you were at Valdosta State, uh, led the Blazers to the 2018 D2 National Championship. It was an undefeated season. What did you learn from that 2018 defense that you want to see in your defense this year? You probably just alluded to a lot of it, though. Well, it's funny. Before that season, people kept asking, hey, how y'all going to be this year? How are you going to be? I said, well, we might win four. We won't win a national championship. I'm not sure yet. It depends how these guys come together. So, obviously, you know, we, uh, we bought in and, and made that run, and I thought it was real special. And, it, um, you know, uh, there's a lot of value and things you can learn from that. but um, a group of guys that buy in and, and play for each other. You might not have the best players, you might not have, but, but guys that, that, that love each other and that buy in and, and play hard is the most important thing to me. You know, um, and the things you learn from, and Coach Bo and Coach Chestnut, when you're making that playoff run, you know, there's a lot of things that you learn as a coach. You know, as the season progresses, you know, building depth. That guy that might be a backup, hey, he might have to come in and win the game for you. You know, we saw that in the, in the Wofford game, right? We saw the quarterback come in, bam. Right, these guys, you got to build depth, right? And the next thing is confidence. When kids have confidence, they start playing with confidence. Oh, I could do that. Hey, coach, I could do that. So as the season progresses, building depth and confidence, then, um, you know, each year is different. Each team is different. Each place you're at is different. So kind of find out what that identity is. And then kind of molding our guys. Because next year, we might be a little bit different, uh, different than the previous year. But what are we good at? And now let's start molding our guys around. Hey, this is what we're going to hang our hat on. This is, this is who we are. This is what we're good at. You know, and the last thing I think uh, the, the valuable experience is when you're making a playoff run, it's a whole different world. You, you're later in the season. Um, we, you're playing three teams. We played a wing two team. We played an option team. We played a spread team. You don't know who you're playing next week, so you're breaking down different opponents and just having to prepare for that. And you're week 14 of the season. The guys are tired and you're adjusting your schedule. So um, I think that, that going through that was a good experience, you know, just to learn how to prepare and just getting the guys to buy in and play together is something that I like to see, and that's the most important thing. Coach Verpale, we appreciate your time. We're excited to have you lead the Owls defense in 2020, and thanks for joining us on Huddle Up. All right, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Thank you. Guys. All right, all right, coach. Fourth quarter, bringing you back on the field. You got to lead us to victory. You ready? Absolutely. I'm always ready. All right. We got questions here from the chat. 
Nancy's asking, how will student athletes living situation be impacted? Will they still be living in dorms? Yeah, right now, um, you know, the living situation has not changed. Um, you know, it, it kind of, uh, it, it's kind of is what it is right now. Um, as far as the living situation, our kids will be in, you know, we got a group of kids in the dorm and we got a group of kids off campus, but right now, um, I know in some places they've, they're trying to get where you have one and we, we there's really honestly no way to, I don't think there's any way feasible that I know of, and I'm not in the administration to, to navigate that at our place. So right now, I don't think anything's changed with the living situation. A question from Will, any feedback from Coach K or strength and conditioning on how much the time away has affected health and conditioning? Well, uh, I'll be honest We He came and sat in my office, uh, I think it was Tuesday after the first run, and he said, Coach, it sure is great, great to be back coaching again. I sure enjoyed it. He goes, but, Coach, we got a lot of work to do. <laughs> so um, I think what you're going to find and what's unique is you're going to have a lot of guys at a lot of different places. And this is what's going to be the challenge for Coach K and for us is normally we're in a little better place where they're collectively – you might have a handful, but collectively they're in a, a closer place where you can kind of move the group. We're going to have to get a gauge on the whole group, and then we're going to have to work our way through it. And I think they're all going to be at a very different place. We've been on them. Listen, I'd get on a Zoom call, and these coaches are on them every time. I'm like, let me tell you something, guys. If you want to set yourself apart, go do something about it right now by yourself. Because if you go bust your tail right now by yourself, you're going to set yourself apart from a guy at Weber State or a guy at North Dakota State who's not doing anything. I said, so when we get back, we're not spending all our time conditioning. We're getting ready to play football. So I think it's going to be a little bit of a mixed bag. I got a feeling once you get everybody back. But, um, you know, the first day was the first day. <laughs> And it's that way a lot of times. So it'll be interesting when they all get back. I know a lot of the guys have been working. Um, we'll just have to see where they are, and we'll, we'll attack it and kind of progress through it the best we can. All right, Coach, last question for the night comes from Stewart. He wants to know how Isaac Foster's doing. He's doing really good. He had started uh, before we uh, stopped spring ball. He was doing part of practice with us. So he was doing all the, a lot of the non-contact stuff. And I think really for him it was, it was more of a confidence thing with his ankle. Um, the reports I've gotten is that he feels like he's in a much better place. Um, you know, during the pandemic, he's been out working. Isaac's an unbelievable kid. He's working, you know, he's, he's one of those going to go do it. You know what I mean? Whether he's here or at home, he's going to go to work. So we won't fully know till we get him back, but he was on progression. I don't think he'd ever, you know, gone full contact in spring, but he would have been doing everything else by the end of spring if everything would have gone like we had planned. Um, so hopefully he's in a place he can come back and has a little more confidence. I think the confidence was the big thing uh, for him more than anything. I think his, his, his ankles heal. It's just it's getting confidence in it. Coach, you gave us a lot of eat tonight. Thanks for joining us on Huddle Up. Well, I appreciate it. And I want to say, listen, Coach Chestnut and Coach Propel and our staff, they do an unbelievable job. They, they, they make me look good. We got, great, we got great people leading these kids. And I think that's really what it's all about. And I think that's what's given us a chance to be successful. When you put a bunch of great people leading great kids and you got great fan support, you know, from everybody there, that's what, that's what makes a program special. That what, that's what makes a program that, that people start talking about. And it's all about people. It's all about how you go about your business. And, uh, and so I appreciate everybody. I really appreciate these coaches. And I appreciate everybody that's on this call for your support. Again, I'll say it again. We couldn't do it without you. It's greatly appreciated. All right, that's our head coach, Brian Bohannon. So big thanks to Coach Bohannon, Coach Chestnut, and Coach Verpale for joining us on Huddle Up. I'm Nolan Alexander. Thank you for joining us tonight.